Hey, welcome everybody to a Draconic Evolution tutorial. As you can see in the description, that's what we're doing today. We are covering Draconic Evolution, and it's going to be broken into, I think, three parts. We can probably get it done in three parts. It might have to go to four. We'll see. But uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. In part one today, we're actually going to begin covering uh, most of the basic stuff. The armor, the weapons, the tools, as well as the ores and stuff themselves and how to get them. So, without further ado, let's get going. So the first thing we're going to start off with is a draconium. Draconium. Here we go. So the thing you're going to be looking for to start off is going to be the draconium ore. This is how we're going to get our, you know, feet wet with the uh, the mod, and eventually get this bad boy right here. All right. So draconium ore is really really pretty. It's got this sparkly blue or purple stone. That's why I got a little purple chest here because I wanted to match, and. Uh, Basically, it's I've got, I think the rarity level is set just the same as diamond. I've never actually dipped into the code for this mod. I just I've kind of read some of the things on the subreddits and stuff like that. And a lot of people are saying uh, certain things like that. And then also when we get to the comets, where there's another place we're going to find this ore, um, I believe they're spaced out at about uh, one. It's like a one in one thousand chance. So every thousand chunks that load, uh, you have a chance of getting one. So. I don't know about the numbers exactly, but they're pretty close and it's really, really rare and it's hard to find. But anyways, when you mine this stuff up, you're going to come up with the, uh, one of three products. Obviously, Silk touching it is going to bring up the ore itself, which will be beneficial because obviously if you're playing in a mod pack, you probably have a grinder or a pulverizer or something of that sort, which can then yield you, I believe, I don't know the exact numbers on it. Let us check real quick. Um, doing like this. Um, under a pulverizer, it can give you two ingots versus just one. Or Shagmo, another one too. Uh, you can get two uh, Draconic Dust instead of just one ingot uh, from basically mining it normal, getting one Draconic Dust and then smelting it down to an ingot. <clears throat> you also have the option of using your pick. A normal pick is going to break it and you're going to get one dust out of it. If you have an auto smelt pick, then you'll be able to smelt this straight into an ingot. But once again, instead of getting two, you're only going to get one. So up to you and how you want to do it. If the very beginning, if you have the ability to seek Silk Touch and Pulverize, two to one is obviously a better ratio. Now, with this draconic dust what we're going to do is wrap it in some stone and we're going to get the draconic evolution information tablet now this tablet literally has everything you need to know about the mod every single item in here has a page and tells you all about them pretty freaking sweet if you ask me it's probably the most uh thorough without being over explanatory uh of any mod like if i want to know about the waver and shovel it basically just gives me the recipe and it just kind of gives you a fun if you're tired of you know your old diamond shovel being too slow we'll try this out this also gives you an area of effects so instead of just one by one two three by three stuff like that it, it's a fun explanation of things i really like the way the tablet's laid out and for any of the rituals and stuff like that all you gotta do is scroll down and there's the books down here at the bottom and it tells you all about everything you need to know uh, the Draconic Shield, uh, Energy Storage Block, which we'll get to later, Ritual of the Draconic uh, Resurrection, which we'll probably do today, uh, the, <laughs> the Pigman Blood Rage, we might do an example of that, we'll see, uh, Comets, Chaos Islands, Placing Items in the World, and then Computer Craft. I'm not going to really even get over this, but this is just integration. It's got a pretty good process for integration. So that is that. The next thing we're going to get into is the other materials that you're going to get. So with the Draconic... Um, dust and the draconic ingots the first things you're going to want to get are the tools the weapons and the armor now let me specify for anybody who's watching this and thinking this is something you can get early in your mod pack it's not an early game thing just to get to the uh this what's called wyvern level of tools weapons and uh uh armor it's pretty mid game uh, you know it's kind of i'll explain why so I'm, like, I'm not one for showing recipes or anything like that, but the recipes are very simple. To get all the wyvern stuff, basically you just have to have the diamond equivalent. Then you're going to wrap it with six draconium ingots, a wyvern core, and a wyvern energy core. Now the wyvern core is why I say it's pretty mid game. Because you've got to make these draconic cores, which are relatively simple. They're just four gold, four draconic ingots, and uh, one diamond. Or, yeah, one diamond. So to make one wyvern core, you're going to need four diamonds. But you're also going to need another star. And as you can see, there are seven items down here, which means you're going to need seven iron, or sorry, uh, nether stars, as well as 28 diamonds 
to make all these guys not including the diamonds that you needed to make the initial sword and all that stuff or whatever so it's pretty it's pretty expensive but it's freaking really cool stuff and if i pop some of this on i'll kind of show you where the coolness factor really lies for me now default i believe the key is c to bring up this uh configure uh or to bring up the hud for draconic evolution um i personally have mine set to something different so just check your options under controls and you'll see what it is but i believe it's c to start but what it gives you the option of is if you click on any one of your items like the helm now there's nothing i can modify to the helm however i can go to the inventory and take and put in enchantments just like this at no cost just put the enchanted book in and what's really cool is if you enchant these on an enchanting table you'll have the book here. So if you don't like the enchantment, you can just take it off. You don't need to get like a disenchanter, which is really funny that they have it here. Um, but like if you get an uh, enchantment that you really want on like a diamond sword, you can disenchant it, take it off, put it on a book, and then just place the book in here. Really freaking sweet. But like things like this, uh, where is it? This one. Um, for your leggings, you get speed modifier and then reduce when walking, which is really cool. Speed modifier is pretty cool. It's 500%. So this is me just walking. This is not sprinting. This is just walking. And then sprinting is so insanely fast that I, yeah, sometimes chunks have a hard time loading it so fast. So that is the, the leggings. That's, this is the low level stuff. This is not the high level stuff. Pretty freaking sweet there. And then the nice thing is you can do reduce when walking. So when I'm walking, I'm just walking a little bit faster. I'm, I'm technically walking five times as fast as I normally would. And then I can kick on sprint. So that's really cool. I think that's a, a cool little option that you don't always have to be fast if you don't want to be. The other one is the jump height modifier. And this one's kind of cool because you can go up to five times as well. So basically, with my sprint and jump, I can cover some huge ground. Pretty freaking sweet. And like I said, this is the low level armor, not the high level armor. Not to mention they have a shield. If you look in the upper left-hand corner where it says uh, blue shield with 200 out of 200, and then it's got an RF number as well as an EN number. Uh, basically what those shields are is, well, let's, I'm in peaceful. Let me get out of peaceful mode real quick. And let's do this. Let us put down a, I think I can get a pigment. No, I don't have the egg for the pigment. Uh, how about spider? Nope, I got to do it through here. Okay. I want someone who's going to attack and do some damage. So let's get a pigment real quick. And let's see what kind of damage this guy can do to me. Mm -hmm. So there's Mr. Pigman. He's not bothering me. Let me get back into uh, game mode here. And uh, I'm going to do a little... Now watch. He's going to come after me. You're going to notice my hearts aren't moving. My shield is barely moving. But what is happening is my RF is going down. And then that EN number is going up. And what that is, is entropy. The higher that number goes, the slower that my shield's going to regenerate. Which is the green bar uh, under the 200 over 200 and then my rf goes down if that hits zero then i have no charge anymore and the armor serves me no purpose anymore but it's pretty sweet as you saw no hearts of damage nothing he couldn't mess with me he couldn't hang he was just a joke now for weapons you have a couple options here too like attack you've got uh three by three aoe or you can go down to one by one aoe area of effect just basically means if i have one zombie in front of me or zombie pigment in front of me if i smack i'll hit him but if I jump it up to a 3x3, three three, then obviously I'll break a 3x3. Three three. Pretty sweet. The shovel as well as the um, uh, pickaxe also have an AoE of uh, up to 3x3 three three before we have uh, modified anything. So it's 1x1 one one or 3x3. Three three, and it's exactly what you think. Let me get the shovel up to 3x3 three three as well. And it's exactly what you think. It's just like the hammer from Tinker's Construct if you've ever used it. And basically, it digs out a 3x3. Three three. Pretty simple concept. And then if you go to the pick, same thing. 3x3. Three three. Now, the one cool feature of these that things like... Uh, if you ever played Batania with the uh, the Terra... The Terra Steel pick. I can't think of the name of it at the moment. Uh, Terra Shatterer. Or like in Blood Magic uh, with your Blood Pickaxe or whatever. You know that if you accidentally click in the wrong place, you will destroy some stuff. Which is really cool about this one because if I put down some, let's say, stone blocks. Let's grab some stone blocks, which are obviously, you know, put down by me, right? And I place a couple of these in the area. Well, if I start mining, it's not going to do any damage to them. It's just going to basically ignore 
anything that I didn't put down. That is AOE safe mode. Goes the same thing for the digging. If you put down a diggable material or whatever, it'll do the same thing. Pretty, pretty sweet with that AOE safe mode. And if you don't want it on, if you're just trying to clear out an area, very simple, just turn it off and no issues. So that is the uh, Wyvern core of elements. Now, I don't, like I said, I didn't show you the recipe for like the stuff like the, uh, the oh, I showed you the Wyvern core really quick. The Wyvern energy core is just redstone and all these. I just don't want to spend much time, but as you can see, it's all materials. Once you start getting the draconic ingots, you'll be able to knock a lot of that stuff out. Pretty freaking sweet. But to get to the next level, you're going to need some awakened draconium. And awakened draconium is actually done through a ritual um, <clears throat> that you have to kill the ender dragon for to get this little got this little dragon heart right here. And we're actually going to go kill him and get the heart real quick because I do want to run another ritual while we're in the end to show you how to get actually get the awakened draconium. Or sorry, not how to get the awakened draconium, how to resurrect the dragon. And to be able to do that, you're going to need this block right here. And this one is going to need some of those wyvern cores that we were just looking at, a block of draconium, but it's also going to need mob souls. Now, mob souls are something you get through um, basically an enchantment called Reaper. And as I grab that sword back because I want to put some Reaper on it, Reaper is an enchantment that basically allows you to collect mob souls. It's still a pretty low chance even with the best um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, with the highest level of Reaper on your sword it's still a pretty low chance of getting a mob soul so we're gonna grab a couple uh, mobbies real quick and then we're also going to uh, well I don't need the enchantment table I need the enchanted book um, Apparently I can't spell. Chinchant. Apparently I thought it was spelled Chinchant. Enchant. And the book is about halfway down if I remember correctly. Want to get through? There we go. Um, somewhere around Wrath. Uh, nope, it's higher than this. Let's see. Power. Might sharpness. Come on, it's around here somewhere. Why can't I find you? I will find it. I will. I will. It's going to happen. It stinks that I can't bring this one up through any eye. It would make this much more simple. Okay, so it was under all these. Was that Reaper? Oh, that's Repair. That's got to put Reaper close by. There it is. So we've got Reapers 1 through 5. There's five levels. So we're going to go ahead and open up our GUI here. We're going to open up our inventory, and we're going to throw the Reaper enchantment in. And basically, we're going to see if we can get any mob souls from these lovely pigs here. Now you can see I'm only killing one by one because I switched my AoE to... Oh, no, it is 3 by 3 Oh, I'm in creative. That makes sense. Let's get back into survival. Let's see. Did I get any mobs? I did not get any mob souls. Let's try again. It, like I said, it is very rare. It doesn't happen very often. But you do get them using the Reaper. So we're going to uh, kind of fly by that because we want to get to the end and go check out what I was talking about down there. So we're going to go ahead and put all these away real quick. I'm going to go over to my chest here because I got a couple uh, useful doodads, one of which we're going to go over right now. Then I'm just going to grab uh, my bow here and some arrows because we're going to kill the ender dragon really, really fast. So that way we can do the uh, resurrection enchantment. Uh, come on, just go in there. Pink, 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 and pink. There we go. So next thing we're going to go over is this guy right here. This is the charm of dislocation, and this is the enhanced charm of dislocation. The charm of dislocation is very simple. It has 20 uses when you make it, and basically if you shift right click on a spot, a little thing will come apart and it says it's bound to this location. So no matter where I'm at, across dimensions or anything like that, if I set this as just my home location and I give it a little you know, right click, it's going to bring me right back to it. 
pretty freaking sweet. Ooh, I forgot how fast my flight speed was on this armor. Okay, so that's the trauma dislocation. The advanced trauma dislocation actually has a GUI. So instead of just shift right clicking on the ground, you shift right click and it'll bring up a GUI. And then you can put in locations whenever you're there. So if I basically set, you know, add new, tutorial, and set it in, this is now the tutorial location. So as I go, well, do I have any, I don't have any overworld stuff planned in it. So we'll just go to tutorial and I'm out of fuel. I can't use it because I need ender pearls to fuel this guy. This one is not limited to the 20 uh, uses that the other one is. Come on. This one is actually fueled by ender pearls. And if you'll see, it says add fuel right here. And so you just click them in and now I'm all filled up on ender pearls. And now I right click and I teleport. Pretty freaking sweet. And there we go. And it teleports you. And what's really funny about it is wherever you're looking when you set it is exactly the direction you're going to be looking when you teleport. I always forget about it because I'm looking at a block and then when I teleport I'm always facing the ground trying to remember where I'm at. But that is the charms of dislocation which actually tie in with this guy. Well actually there's two of them. We have the dislocator uh, receptacle and then we've also got the dislocator pedestal. The dislocator pedestal is really cool for two reasons. Uh, say if you just want to set up a really quick portal system, you can take this guy, which is for home, and you can put this guy in the end. And then you could take one in the end and put this little guy for home right here. By right clicking, it places it. And then if you click on it, it basically sends you to that location. And it doesn't take up uses. You can also do the same thing with the enhanced charm and dislocation. Right click to put it in. And you'll see it's got actually the name above it telling you where your location is going to send you. If that's not where you want to go, you can pick it up and say, I want to go to the Ender Dragon, set it down, and now this one will send you to the Ender Dragon. Pretty freaking nice. The other option you have, and actually I have got to grab one more thing, is this guy right here. And I'm going to go into creative mode to build this real quick. This is the uh, dislocation receptacle, right? So very similar to the other one, and I'm going to put a hole there and tell you why in just a second. Uh, basically, you can build it just like a normal nether portal, but you're not limited to having to do the the same shape. You can kind of do some crazy shapes if you want to. I like to do just the two by two. It just kind of makes sense for me. And uh, and these corner blocks actually don't have to be there, just like the nether portal or whatever. But if I take my uh, charm and dislocation and stick it in there, all of a sudden you'll see there's a portal open. And if I go through, which I don't want to do it right at the second, I will go right through to wherever that uh, particular uh, charm was set. So this one is currently set for the Ender Dragon. Go in and we'll go right through. I've got this to go home, so we can actually do this real quick. Boop. Through the portal, switch in dimensions. Here we are. This one we're going to come back in just a second. And then all I do is use my other one to get right back home. And I am back. Pretty sweet. Um, you know, obviously they're not cheap. They're not too expensive, but by the time you really get into Draconic Evolution, you're really going to have the materials and stuff to make a lot of this stuff. Because this one is the Wyvern Core, which is the, uh, it's going to take the Nether Star. But uh, the Charm of Dislocation is really not expensive at all. It's an Eye of Ender with four dust and four blaze powder. So you can start getting these guy, the, this guy pretty quick and pretty easy and set up a teleportion, uh, teleportation setup using these pedestals pretty easily. Pretty freaking sweet. All right, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and head out. We are going to go take out the Ender Dragon so we can resurrect the Ender Dragon. So what we're going to need is a couple items. And this is all stuff you can look up in the book, but you're going to need some charged draconium. We're going to need four ingots of charged, or sorry, four blocks of charged draconium. We're going to need four diamond blocks. Oops, that was a little bit too much. We'll go ahead and uh, put those away. And then you're going to need 12 uh, quartz pillar blocks. Like so. And if you saw when I was there, it's already partially set up. So, um, oh, and sorry, and I did forget one thing. We're going to need four glowstone. That is the other thing we're going to need. Oh, let me get in here. Four glowstone. And we're going to go get this guy set up. So we're going to take a trip over to the Ender Dragon real quick, like so. 
and understand that you're not going to be able to kill the ender dragon this quickly your first time around because you're not going to be able to have this draconic bow that I have. I just have it to finish him off really quickly because I can kill him with all of his crystals still hooked up. So this bow is epically awesome and it kills him really quick. But we get this part right here. Now this is the whole point of killing the ender dragon over and over again is to get this dragon part. And once you've killed him once, and you make the, uh, oop, I forgot to grab it as I showed it to you. Once you make the uh, resurrection stone, you'll basically be able to reproduce dragons whenever you want. Pre it's, it's pretty epic, actually. I mean, there's no other way for me to put it. It's just pretty epic. So you basically take the stone, you put it in the middle. It has to be wrapped around by four obsidian like this. <coughs> and then we place our four glowstone. Wow, I am flying really fast just like this and then I did this in a weird way so you can kind of see let me turn my flying speed down real quick um, I did this so you can kind of see how it doesn't have to be perfect you can see on this side there's one stone block in between the obsidian uh, blocks and then there's two stone blocks over here three over here versus you know what would basically be two right here or sorry two right there as an example um, it just has to be in a general configuration. It does not have to be an exact thing, which is, I think, one of the coolest things I've seen is usually some of these, like, you know, rituals and stuff are so strict to the rules that, you know, you miss one block and it won't work. And so this one kind of gives you a little bit of leeway. Now, <clears throat> the corner ones will be getting the charged uh, draconic blocks and then the diamond blocks will be going on the lower pillars, the middle pillars here. And it's a really simple ritual to start up, <clears throat> plain and simple. All you gotta do is right click with your right hand. You'll see lightning starts and the ritual begins. And then all of a sudden the blocks start donating to the middle and you're gonna get a little ball of aura here while all the diamond goes in and the red goes crazy. And uh, well, eventually the aura will start in just a second. There we go. Now it's starting to go. The, all the particles are joining together. And then eventually they're going to start shooting out some green particles that are going to shoot up to the sky. And you're going to have a dragon resurrected. Now I just want to show you the dra dragon resurrecting real quick. Because, well, it just looks really cool. And I think the new dragon, because they don't use the same skin. It's not technically the same ender dragon. Which is kind of interesting that they do it that way. <clears throat> um... And one thing I didn't mention are these charged draconian blocks. I will show you how to make the charged draconian blocks, but I want to wait till we get to the power part because, well, one of the blocks ties into power, but you can charge it with like an ender IO vibrant chamber if you want to. Anything that charges a block or charges, you know, things that have like a chart, like a flux uh, thing will charge these uh, draconian blocks as well. So I'm not going to go over the, the way you can charge it using the mod at the moment. We're actually going to get that into the energy. But check out the skin on this guy. The skin on this guy is pretty cool. It's like I said, it's not the normal Ender Dragon, even though it says Ender Dragon. But he's got a really cool look to him. But he dies just as easy with this bow. It doesn't take long at all. Yes, the Draconium stuff is seriously that overpowered. Alright. Now, while we're in the end, there is one other thing I want to show you while we're here. And that is a Comet. Now, they're not common. They're actually, this is what I was talking about that might only be like one in every thousand uh, blocks or whatever. But this is a comet, and this is going to be one of your best sources of draconium ore. As you can see, it's in the end stone, and it's just, it's such a cool looking block. I love the sparkles. It makes it really easy to tell what's a draconium block and what's not. But that is, um, that is a comet. They spawn randomly. As you can see, I'm 7,000 blocks away and 6,000 blocks away from uh, where the, uh, uh, ender dragon is so it took me a while to find this one that was some traveling just to find this guy right here so that's a comment this is another place to get the draconium ore. the other draconium ore obviously found in the overworld or if you're playing on one of the mod packs that doesn't have an overworld like you know sky blocks or something like that or sorry sky factory or something like that you have your other ways to get it and your your mod is obviously directly related to that but i think for this one i think we're pretty good on uh, what we've gone over in this first episode. We've covered all of the Draconic stuff as well as all the um, the Wyvern stuff. And, oh, you know, there's one thing we should probably do. Let me show you how we get those Awakened Stones. So, 
I'm gonna go ahead and throw all this stuff in the chest real quick. We're gonna just take this one heart, these four blocks right here, and we're gonna get some draconic cores uh, right there. We're gonna need 16 of these guys. And I'll explain why in just a second for 16. And then we're gonna want some TNT as well as like a redstone torch. All right. Now, the whole thing about uh, making the awakened draconium, right? You're gonna need uh, charged draconium to convert into awakened draconium. And what happens is you basically, you know what, let's do this a little bit further away. Let's do this over here. Actually, I'd almost do it in the water, that'd be funny, but no, we'll just do it right over here. All right, so we're gonna take a piece of TNT and we're gonna place it in the ground. And what this is basically going to do is an explosion will awaken the heart and allow it to start uh, absorbing, um, I guess, energy. That's the best way I can say it. If you if you watch what happens, it'll make more sense to what I'm saying. But uh, basically, four cores, four draconic cores, will provide enough energy to turn one charged draconium block into an awakened block. The max you can do is four blocks, which means 16 cores. So we're gonna go ahead and throw our heart in here and we're gonna go ahead and light the TNT and you're gonna watch the heart wake up like so. And as you see, it's gonna start floating up and it's got this little ring of aura around it. And you can do this however you want. Things just have to be in the general area. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw all 16 of our cores in. So we have enough energy uh, to uh, do it and then you'll see it's now outputting it's no longer inputting it's outputting into the charged draconium blocks and in a second you'll get a big boom like right now sometime eventually there we go and now we have the awakened draconium and this is where you get that to do all the other builds and make the um all the oh draconic armor and stuff like that so all you gotta do is kill the ender dragon to get to that point but you've also had to kill the wither quite a few times as well so that's where we're at so for that's going to wrap up this episode of uh the draconic evolution tutorial in the next part we're going to go over some of the specialty blocks and some of the fun items and then in the final one we're going to go over the power system that is incorporated by the mod so until then guys y'all know the deal i'm slider havoc and i'm out of here peace